Well, Joe, here we are once again at Wednesday in the Word. Really, really glad that the guys and gals, the people have joined us watching today, and we hope that this Word will be an enrichment to your life. Uh, we're actually in a four-part series that we've entitled The Believer Who is a Visible Expression. And as we talk about visible expression, uh, we want to kind of identify what kind of expression, what does our expression as believers look like in a world that we live. And so it took us to Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth. The salt loses its savor. How will it be seasoned? It's then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it shall give light to all who are in the, high, in the house. Verse 16, let your light, that's key, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yes, uh, I started to say yesterday, but last week we talked a little bit about some of the characteristics of salt, and salt's no good if it's not out of the salt shaker. We talked about it, it, salt being a source of flavor, uh, salt being uh, something that creates thirst. We talked about salt being a common substance. But today, we're going to talk about light and what the characteristics of light are that connect to the believer and, and his or her impact in life. So, Joe, how about you take us away? All right. So, let's let's look at that Matthew 5 and 14 again, just uh, 14 and 15. He says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and, uh, and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all that are in the house. Um, so in our, in our notes that you can uh, link to from our description here, uh, we, you, we shared about Peter Milne, who was a, a missionary in a small island country, and uh, he has, of course, since passed away, but he has a picture hanging there in that little church that he founded, and underneath it, they had written, when he came, there was no light. When he died, there was no darkness. Wow. That's what they said about him, which, yeah. of course, obviously makes us think about Jesus, uh, and, you know, in Matthew, uh, back in chapter 4, uh, where he was quoting Isaiah, he said, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, uh, light is sprung up. So obviously referring to, to Jesus, uh, his right. coming into a dark world and bringing in uh, that, that light. Um, it, uh, uh, there's a man named Harry Louder who uh, I don't personally know, but obviously it's been a while for him, but he said that... Um, from his boyhood, he would watch the lamplighters, and he could always tell where he was because of the trail of light that he left uh, behind him. Yeah. And I, wow, well, that's really a pretty cool example of how, obviously, how Christ came into a dark world, but even as us, things that we do, uh, just like Peter Milne, uh, there should be light where we've been because we're, we're, we're bringing the light of Christ with us. Ab ab absolutely. When, when I read that about what Louder had said, that was really inspirational to me um, so that I think caused me to think about wherever I go, when I leave, I want people to be able to say that what I left is better than it was before I came. And that's exactly what they said about this uh, Peter Milne. What, a, what an epitaph, huh? Wasn't that's, that awesome? It's great. And for me, what I tend to think of is when light is present, okay, obviously there's light. But when that light moves on, darkness returns. 
but that's kind of not what we see in these examples. We see, we know there was, there was things left behind. And like you say, as after, after maybe you or someone or a man of God, a woman of God has been somewhere, it's not like the light's gone with them. The work that they've done, the people that have accepted Christ, that light continues to shine long after they're gone, which is okay. amazing. Yeah, amazing. you know, you know in, in, our, in our discussion, in our pre-discussion about uh, our, our time together today, you and I, Joe, walked through some of these things, but I just, I just had a thought about uh, how important, if, if I'm bringing light into uh, a, a dark place, and then if all of a sudden, uh, like Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, but if the light is then removed from the darkness, then darkness returns. Yeah. So it causes me then to want to spend a lot of my energy while I'm in that dark place to pass on the light to someone else. Exactly. You know? And if I'm not, if I'm not doing that with a younger generation, if I'm not doing that with young men, young women in my life that I'm not intentionally trying to pass from generation to generation, the light that he's pouring in me, then ultimately darkness will catch up uh, to where light had been rather than light continuing. Now that, that's challenging to me today. Yeah, well, it is. And it's a big responsibility. Conversation about the light and how it's uh, impregnating. I think that, that, that's a good word, Joe, how that we as light come in and we impregnate that area so that, uh, man, this, this is the sermon right here, so that life could ultimately be born and the new life carry light uh, continually into that circumstance. Wow. Yeah. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that might be a sermon I preach somewhere down the line. Maybe. Let's talk about some of the characteristics of light. Yeah, yeah. Um, as, as you and I talked uh, earlier, we, we, we first, I think, talked about light being silent. You know, you, you come into a dark room and um, all we have to do is flip on the switch and light comes on. Uh, no noise, no big splash. Uh, there's not any celebrations, no horns. The light just comes on and the light stays on. And that light provides me an opportunity to be able to see the things that I need to see if the room is dark. Uh, and it I, I, I thought about this this morning as I was reviewing our um, text, that um, if lights become noisy, we have a tend the tendency to be distracted by that noise. It's kind of like, you, you know, these fluorescent lights. Yeah. Sometimes the ballast goes out in them and they get a hum in them. And that hum constantly is distracting to me. I'm distracted by the hum, even though there's light, but with the hum. So what I end up doing, I'm, I'm trying to identify which light that is and repair that light so that it doesn't continue that distracting noise. So I'm wondering how much of our speaking could actually be distracting from the light that we're endeavoring to bring in. Now that, that was another thought for me today. Yeah. And you know what I was thinking when you were saying that, that hum from the ballast, that's really not the light humming. It's the hum from what's supposed to be bringing the light and which I think right. is exactly what you're saying. If, you know, Christ's light is going to shine, but I need to be careful that I'm not distracting from that in trying to, to, to do that light. So that's, so, 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 so light is silent. That's a good one. How about, how, is there another one? Oh yeah. Yeah. Preach the gospel at all times. 
Yeah. yeah. Preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. Yes, that's wow. Awesome. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes our words may actually be distractions. We hope our life speaks louder than our words. What was the, what was the third one that we talked about? Light being what? Light attracts attention. Oh, yeah. It attracts attention. Mm. You know, um, if, if you are a light in an area, people immediately recognize that. If you're bringing uh, peace into a chaotic situation, if you're bringing clarity into a confused situation, if you're bringing justice into a, a situation where there is injustice, if you're bringing uh, help into a place where that people are struggling, you don't have to uh, uh, command attention. It's your actions that immediately draw people to what it is you're doing or what it is that you're saying. Light attracts people. So uh, it, 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 everywhere we go, if, if uh, I'm the Christian on an athletic team, the only one, then I've got to be light to that team. If I'm uh, a Christian family in a neighborhood, then I can be light to my neighborhood. If I'm a nurse on a floor at a hospital, I can be light on the floor of the hospital. If if, if, if I'm a student in a school, a professor uh, at a uh, university, at a professional attorney in a law firm, salesperson, anywhere, I have the direct responsibility as a believer to bring the light into dark, dark places. My goodness. But what, what good is light if we don't really turn the switch on, Joe? I, I mean, it doesn't do anything. None of these things that we've talked about uh, happen if we're not able to see that light. None of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So kind, you know, of like, kind of like what we talked about last week. Remember we talked about last week when salt, if it's lost, it's savor, it's good for nothing but to be trodden over by men. So if we're not, turning the light on, what, 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 what does that give us as far as an idea in moving forward as believers? Uh, what, what did the scripture say? Read that scripture again. Um, the, uh, the, the one about the, the lamp on a hill or the... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's Matthew 5, 14 and 15. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Yeah. So again, so, so allowing that to be seen is what, uh, you know, causes all these things we've been talking about, because if the light is hidden, they don't even know it's there, which is kind of interesting. They don't even know it's there. Um, so, and I know we've been talking about, well, you know, your light shines louder than your words, but I mean, I'm thinking, so, so how am I hiding my light in a presence? But I, I'm sure I could if I, if I wasn't walking the way Christ, you know, if I don't act any different than anyone else, then maybe, you know, I'm, I'm not really letting that light of Christ shine through me, uh, even though I'm not necessarily preaching. But, you know, if I'm acting like everybody else, then maybe, you know, that maybe that's one way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I certainly think that because um, there, there are many just good-natured people that don't know Christ. True. So by us just doing good things like any other person that might not know Christ, I think when difficult circumstances arise that, that really need Christian values, Christian principles. That's when the believer shines in a way that distinguishes him yeah. from all other 
voices or lives. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like we have closet Christians, you know, that, that they're hiding. And when, when moments open where they can bring light or can bring justice or can address a matter, they stay in the closet. You know, they're not coming out. And that's the very reason that Jesus saved us was in those kinds of moments that we're called out to show forth, this is what Peter said, show forth the praises of him that called us out of darkness, watch this, into his marvelous light. That's what we're called to do, see? And if we're not doing that, we're just closet Christians and we're doing nothing of impact regarding the kingdom of God. And I certainly want to be more than a closet Christian. Yes, true. True. I want to be, I want to be more, you see. The reason Jesus came was to flesh out in the world what righteousness looks like. And he became sin for us that we might become righteous expression of the righteousness of God. Now, that's a, that's a mouthful right there. That's a, that's a mouthful right there. The reason Jesus came was to flesh out in the world what righteousness looks like and become sin for us that we might become the righteous expression of of the righteousness of God. Oh my goodness. That's where I want to live. That's, that's where I want to live. And when we do so, what did Paul say to the uh, Corinthians? You are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, known and read by all men. Wow, our lives are being read everywhere we go. A living letter. Hey, that's a good statement. That people read. Yeah, yeah. Preach the gospel everywhere we go, and when necessary, we'll use words. Use words. Wow. We hope, we hope that uh, you've been enriched by this discussion today and pray that you will bring light into the darkness that you walk in moment by moment, day by day. Blessings on you. Join us next week for the third session of Wednesday in the Word from Matthew 5, 13 to 16. Be blessed. See you, Joe. Bless.